Today, we are going to the track. Actually, this, this is not the track. This is like my little, it's like a three mile warm up. I go this way. This is like above the streets in Paris. It's kind of nice. It's like a, it goes from like the Bastille all the way to the, to the track. Yes. Uh, track workout. All right, so Daniels, Jack Daniels, Dr. Jack Daniels, our pace reps workout. Why should we do this workout? And then how should we do this workout? Well, the why. Well, there's two reasons for the why. There's a runnery reason and then a sciency reason. The runnery reason is basically they help you feel better. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically you're gonna be doing very fast repetitions. So you're going to feel better running faster, but then also you're going to feel even better running at slower speeds, right? Cause you get used to running fast. Oh, this is easy to run really fast. And so then when you're running slower, like sl like at your race pace for whatever you're doing, this race pace becomes easier. At least you feel like it's much, it's much better. It feels much smoother and you feel really good, right? And the sciencey reason, I'm gonna do this walking and moving. So there's a little more, there's a little more holding your attention, right? Well, one of the primary things you're doing is actually strengthening the running muscles because you're putting down a lot more force on the ground. So F equals MA, force is mass times acceleration. So if we're increasing our acceleration, which we're doing during these, then you're increasing the force, the force on what? Well, on your muscles. So it's an increased force, or we could also say an increased stress on the musculoskeletal system. So like your calves, your glutes, your quads, uh, you know, within your calves, you have your, like your Achilles and you have like the muscles in your feet as well. Even some like your hip stabilizers, these are all getting a lot more torque and a lot more force and stress through them. And so they're, well, you know, assuming you recover properly, they're getting stronger, which is, which is good. Also, I saw like kind of the third why kind of within the runnery and the science, science reason is that you're working on your stride length and stride rate, which means speed because speed is your, the rate of, of turnover times the length of turnover, stride rate times stride frequency. And so if you're doing really fast repetitions, you're moving your feet a lot quicker. But then also because you're strengthening all the running stuff, your stride length is getting a bit longer too. So this is obviously fantastic for your speed. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, Jake, this is so absolutely amazing. I am so enthralled and engaged with the topic of today's video. The only question I have remaining is how? do I do this workout? Well, You gotta, you gotta get some speed in there. The way this workout goes, so right now I'm doing two to three miles of 300 meters at about one mile race pace with equal jog recovery. So I'm just doing another lap, I'm kind of stumbling right now, eight or nine or 10 or whatever minute mile. And in the last little bit, I'll even walk. So what makes this workout effective what makes it hit those things that I mentioned to you a minute ago, you know, training muscle strength, training speed, uh, training uh, running economy, is this gigantic rest period between the work bouts. I'm doing like, three, like 300 meters, I'm hitting like 68 or something, for like, you know, 70 seconds, and I take like a two or three minute break. Super slow jog and end a walk, because the goal is for me to feel fresh and powerful and strong fluid on each rep. I want to have like perfect form and I don't want to be reaching for it. I want to have it kind of be within myself, within a comfort zone. So I'm running very fast, but it's kind of relaxed and controlled. And the only way to do that is to make sure that my heart rate goes back down, my breathing is steady, and you know, I've kind of regenerated a little ATP and kind of fossil creatine in my muscles from like a science perspective so that I can have the exact same effort 
for the next rep because that's the point of the workout. So I'm not taxing my cardiovascular system. I'm taxing my musculoskeletal system. And don't get me wrong, I'm finishing each rep. I'm, I'm tired. Like I'm, you know, it's an effort to throw your stuff around the track. I know it doesn't look too fast, but for me, it's pretty fast. I'm running like, I think like 440, 445 per mile. You know, I do have to kind of keep my form in check. And for me, it's really important because I have a history with like imbalances from really poor choices of footwear. Uh, Overstriding has been a tendency with me. And so when I'm going, when I'm chucking myself around, I'm trying to like keep my hips nice and tucked underneath me, have a little bit of a forward lean, make sure my arms are kind of controlled, compact, and my left one, trying to make sure it doesn't like, trying to make sure it doesn't like raise up as I'm going. Try to keep everything nice and down and straight. And it's so cool, man, I love, I love this workout. So in my own training, like what happened is, well, I basically I did Jack Daniels this kind of training plan for the last few months. And there's a stage of about six weeks where you do two workouts a week, one workout to tempo, and the second workout is a work workout like this. 200s or 400s. See, I'm gonna walk now. How many running workouts? I want you to have a little walking break in there. The rep stays like once a week is the tempo. And then the other day is a workout like this, 200s or 400s of mile race pace. And I, I noticed, you know, the first, the first like two weeks where, you know, it was, it was weird because I'd just been jogging and doing marathon stuff, like just long runs and tempos and mileage. I hadn't been moving myself kind of this quickly for a long period of time. But then after like two or three weeks, I, I really started adapting and I noticed that my, my actual muscles were getting bigger, like more defined, like my glutes and stuff. But then when I was running, you know, I felt so much more powerful and like the hip, I swear to God, instead of like, as I was before, I was kind of like reaching to pull myself now like after these workouts i'm like kind of i'm planting and extending so basically the only thing you're really supposed to do in your stride besides focusing on turnover is focusing on extension so pushing off pushing backwards and then that's it you don't focus on lifting because this is a, a passive action this happens automatically within your muscle fibers as well as kind of knee lift and plant so you're really not supposed to focus on those too much especially if you're a distance runner it's mainly just supposed to be extension, which for me, anecdotally, I found this has been phenomenal for that. So I've gotten just a lot more powerful in my stride. And of course, you know, everything below 440 per mile pace, or excuse me, above 440 per mile pace, has gotten a lot easier. So like my tempo pace has just felt more comfortable. My long runs have felt more comfortable. Like it's been really nice. But the thing is, is, you know, I did about, you do about six weeks of this in Jack Daniels' plan and then, so very clearly the how, do like two to three miles of 200 or 400 at like one mile race pace. You know, you don't have to be precise with it. You just want to run at a strong, fast pace. Then taking equal rest at least. So, so minimum the same distance you just ran as rest, but preferably a little bit more. So like I'm doing like 300, I'll do a 300 jog and walk for another 30 seconds or something. So like two and a half minutes. Each rep needs to feel really good, like really, really strong, fluid, comfortable, powerful, you know, each one. And when your muscles kind of start to break down, which they will. So like when I first started the phase, I do like, like a mile, mile and a half at like just 200s. And after like a mile, my legs kind of started to go and I'll call it quits and that's okay. After a few weeks, I could handle like two or three miles. So you're really just building you're strengthening the muscles. So be patient, don't overdo it. You wanna make sure each one has perfect form because that's essentially what you're training, right? And then lastly, like where to stick it in your training cycle. So for me, what I did, I, I did like six weeks of Jack Daniels, like basically, you know, like I said, once a week tempo and then one one dedicated workout to this per week. And now I'm kind of moving on. I'm doing the like VO2 stuff. Additionally, people have you do like strides after easy runs, like eight, eight by 100 meters at guess what? about your mile race pace, you're kind of doing the same thing. You can tack these on like 200s or 400s like at the end of a tempo. So you could do a 20 minute tempo and then stick on four by 200 or two by 400, big rest and everything afterwards. I found for myself, I, I don't have access to a weight room and hills are kind of hard to find. Well, they're kind of a pain to get to in Paris. So I'm gonna start sticking in 
a workout back in there. So like I'll have like a, a tempo day, a VO2 max day or like a fart like day. And then I'll try and find a day um, and rest up for one of these workouts. And so what I would do is I would for sure take an easy day before, for sure, for sure, for sure. And an easy day after you do this, this workout. And man, it's so cool. Cause like, like I jumped into it today. And my first one I did like, like 78 seconds or something. I was like, bah! oh my God, or 72 seconds for a 300. I was like, oh. But then um, after after two or three or I think about by my fourth rep, uh, about a mile into it, I was hitting, I'm, I'm still doing it actually, hitting like 65, 68, which is perfect. That's like right on pace. It's like four or 40 a mile or something. And I kind of gradually warmed up into it. And now each one, I'm able to hit it. Like I'm, I'm able to, I'm able to hit the pace and still feel in control of it. So just be patient, have a nice warm, get a long warm up. I jogged like three miles here. I did my little stretches and stuff, my dynamic stretches and stuff, and then ease into the workouts and reap the benefits. All right, so one last time. Remember uh, the why is that we are training uh, running economy. So that's muscle strength. Uh, you're training stride length. You're training uh, stride frequency, uh, the speed. So you've got running economy, you have speed. Um, and then from like a, a runner's kind of standpoint, you're actually just, you're getting, uh, you're becoming more efficient. You're gonna start feeling more comfortable running at faster paces and also running at slower paces because you're becoming more economical. And how do we do it? You basically have 200s or 400s with a big rest in between and you make sure that your forearm's perfect on each of them. Don't don't go too fast, right? All right, if you're enjoying, and I, which I hope you are, please, of course, like the video, subscribe, and then, hey, you could send it to somebody too if you have a runner friend and you're like, hey, there's some good stuff in here. You could like share the video, share my channel, spread the love. That would be fantastic. And again, thanks everybody for watching and I will see you next time.